Hey guys, in this two-part tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made a Disney castle silhouette lamp. In part one, I will show you how I traced and cut out the castle, and in part two, I will include the painting, the glitter, and the electronics. I made this as a gift for my seven-year-old niece, but if you never grew out of the Disney phase, then you can make one for yourself as well. I will leave a list of materials and tools in the description below. In addition, throughout the video, you'll find some other tips and tricks to help you out. Okay, so the first step is to cut your material of choice down a bit. I'm using masonite because it's thin, light, and fairly inexpensive. This large piece was about eight bucks and it did not fit in our Forerunner, so that was fun. But after copious amounts of bungee cords and stress, we got it home. So we're cutting this with a handheld circular saw, but you could just use a handsaw. This stuff cuts really easily. A quick tip for working with masonite, it's thin and thus easy to break. Throughout the project, make sure it's well supported. Now that I have a smaller piece with which to work, I'm going to trace my castle onto the masonite. I created this silhouette in Illustrator using an image of the Disney castle. If you want to make a lamp for yourself, you can find the silhouette on my website, to which I will leave a link in the description below. I'm using carbon paper under the image to transfer the silhouette to the masonite. Then I used an embossing tool to trace the edge of the castle. And don't forget the windows. Once you've finished, you can remove the stencil and carbon paper. You should be left with a nice outline. Just to make sure I didn't smudge it as I was cutting it out, I traced over the outline with a Sharpie and my trusty ruler. Time to cut it out. I used a handsaw to cut large pieces off and get as close to the outline as possible. When using a saw, any saw, let the saw do the work. If it's grabbing the material instead of cutting, you're pushing too hard. You need to become one with the saw. Then I transitioned to a coping saw to get into some of the smaller spaces. You could also use a fret saw if that's what you have on hand. The point is to have either a good deal of reach or a lot of blade flexibility to let you get into some of the smaller spaces of the design. Be careful when you're cutting around the flags and other narrow parts because, ah, because of that. It's pretty fragile in those areas. As I mentioned before, just make sure your masonite is well supported as you're doing the sawing. After I did everything I could with the coping saw, I used a small sanding drum on my Dremel to clean everything up. To get to the windows, I drilled holes in the windows until I could fit the Dremel bit into it. I followed that with needle files to refine and finish the edges. For the back, I just used a 2x4 I had sitting around. I measured it on the castle and then cut and sanded the pieces. To make room for the controller, I measured the space I needed using the controller. Then I drilled a bunch of holes until the wood block fell out. I cleaned up those rough edges with a file and my Dremel. I used a router tool for the Dremel to cut the places for wall hangers. You could also build a kickstand for this lamp if you don't want it on the wall. So that's it for part one. In part two, I will show you how I painted it, added the glitter, and added the electronics. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified, hopefully, about part two. In the description, I will also leave a link to the Craft Maidens tutorial on a similar lamp that she did using the Hogwarts castle, so make sure to check that out. See you soon. I'm going to show you how I made a Disney castle silhouette lamp. 
And I forgot everything I was supposed to say. Ugh. In this two-part tutorial, I will show you how I made a Disney Castle silhouette lamp. Part oh my god, I have a cramp in my foot. Hey guys, in this two- ugh. God, words! Words! <laughs>